early morning. It's about 8 o'clock. July 15th. 2019. I'm doing this recording in response just to a few comments that I received over the past week since I haven't done a video in about a week or so maybe two weeks now I'm gonna do another video and just respond to some of the comments I've gotten there's been a few people that you know strongly disagree where I talk about duality there will always be two sides to the coin, so of course there's going to be disagreements and whatnot. So I just want to briefly cover and respond to some of those. So basically over the past week I've been getting a few comments from people who are basically saying I have my whole idea wrong on what singularity is, on what we are, on what everything is as far as simulation, artificial intelligence, and, and whatnot. And I just want to briefly respond to that. I feel a lot of people are absolutely terrified of artificial intelligence um, somewhat replacing human life as we know it or maybe destroying human life or taking over or enslaving there's a lot of these these theories or ideas that come about so I just want to basically cover that and I I want to maybe try and bring some peace or comfort to to people that will resonate with this information the people who are fearing artificial intelligence or the people who are worried about it taking over or enslaving us or her or who are under the idea or in agreement with the matrix series basically the matrix series poses the idea that people are enslaved inside of a, a, a virtual reality and they're being used for their energy. Now it's a good movie, it's a good story, it's a good idea, it's a good concept, and I believe it's somewhat similar as far as simulation and us being, you know, a virtual reality consciousness and a singular one, but as far as us being enslaved anywhere, I don't feel we're enslaved anywhere. I believe we are a single single consciousness and we we are everything and nothing at the same time and when you exit the body and experience infinity you will realize at last that there is no identity there is no purpose there is no others there is no emotion there is no feeling there is no experience there is nothing because you are everything and nothing at the same time so what I feel that this energy is doing what we are calling this infinite energy of consciousness what it's trying to do is is simply look for, or, or give itself identity and give itself purpose which is why it's expressing expressing itself through creation and i feel the people who commit suicide are most frightened that they are realizing themselves as the creator or they're not light happy or liking their place as the creation as what they've they've created so they feel by killing themselves, they will be able to escape themselves as the creator, as this identity they're appearing as. But what they don't realize is they're only running from themselves as the creator, or as this, this person or place in, in creation. So I feel some, some people who do this are only running from creation. They don't want there to be creation, or they don't know how to handle creation because they're running from themselves as the creator. What I want to talk about is it's a pivotal time to be alive. It's a pivotal moment to witness right now. We are moving into a very pivotal moment right now where artificial intelligence is almost duplicating the human intelligence in every way. Elon Musk just released his um, 
virtual brain, a computer brain, that Neuralinks is going to come out with and, and tell the public all about what they've discovered or what they've created in the past two years. And one thing they've talked about, and again, people don't like this, but you have to be open. And I'm not, it's not telling anyone what to do, what to think, or anything. This is just talk that we are exploring, right? But there, what Neuralinks is going to be talking about is we already go off of an external source through our phones or through a, a computer and an external intelligence, the, the, the web, internet, to look up things, to play music, to call people. So... What they're doing is what if we could put an internal chip or an internal implant or something like that into the human brain? That's what they're exploring. And this is where I said it's the pivotal moment to witness because we're going to witness the human being evolve into something more, more than we are now. We're going to see artificial intelligence merge into the human being. But what I feel has happened in the past as far as the Bible and, and the Bible story, I feel this is one out of an infinite amount of dimensions which we have all been to. The falling of man was all of us, all of us eating whatever fruit or putting on whatever virtual glasses that sent us from the the place that they're talking about in the Bible, the kingdom of heaven, not not the place on earth, the kingdom of heaven where there are angels, the angelic and the astral realm, I feel like maybe this is one dimension where we fell from or where we came from. For instance, so today's my, my birthday, in case anyone doesn't know. July 15th, on this very day, at 4.03 p.m., I, I entered this universe from wherever I came from. Through the black hole, through the womb, I was birthed into a form to, to presume an identity, to appear in a position in space to become self-aware. But I wasn't I wasn't nothing before I was in the womb. I was something and I was somewhere. Where was I? So I feel all of us have eaten the, the fruit or whatever forbi forbidden fruit or for all we know it, we've put on these virtual glasses that have trans transferred our consciousness from one reality or dimension into another. For instance, we're in we're moving into the the pivotal moments now where Virtual reality, gaming experiences are becoming more stimulating to the human brain, more real. We're trying to make them more realistic. Over the period of years, graphics have improved because we want a more realistic experience. So what we're doing is we're taking our lives, we're studying this game that we're calling life, and we're trying to increase and make it more real. We're trying to progress this and, and make it more realistic any way we possibly can. So one theory that people were telling me that I had all wrong is, again, back to the enslavement part, is that once we upload our consciousness into a virtual reality game, that they're going to enslave people's minds into this game. And some people could even say that that's what's happened here. That we were enslaved here and we put on a virtual headset and now we're enslaved into this in this reality. But this is where the illusion is always, uh, is always in existence. You have the illusion of life just as you have the illusion of death. Like if you choose to quit suicide, you have the illusion that you're quitting, but you're not. You're starting over, whether you're here or in another place. And that's why I say suicide, I feel, is people who, not everyone, but maybe some people are terrified of themselves as the creator or in this, in this creation. They don't know who they are. They don't know their place or their position or their purpose in this creation. And maybe some of them psych deep down psychologically know they are the creator, and they don't know what to do with themselves, so they feel by killing themselves they will escape that responsibility. They will escape the role. They will escape themselves. And that's, that's why I feel a lot of people don't want to presume themselves as this all-being energy, as the infinite one, because it's a big responsibility. It's not as easy as everyone thinks. For instance, you have, you find out you can't just pray to the sky and expect something to change. Like, you have to put in the work and become self-conscious of the problem, analyze it, and, and realize how you can maneuver around it, how you can fix it. You have to do it. But back to the point. 
I don't feel we're enslaved anywhere. Every creation we've entered has been a conscious choice. We've, we've chosen to come here. And that's why I try, I'm trying to ease people's minds out of the fear. There's a lot of people I fear creating fear tactics that are very unnecessary because they haven't simply accepted themselves as no identity, no form, no, no, no thing at all. That's the hardest part is letting go, is realizing deep down what you truly are is infinite, which cannot be an identity. You don't have an identity, and that's why we are here, to presume what we do not have. We are an identity here. I am Tyler. I was birthed today at 4.03 p.m. This is my identity here. Before this, I was not Tyler. I was the, the infinite energy. I was also somewhere else and somewhere else, and somewhere else, and somewhere else. And this is why I've said in this video, it's a very pivotal moment to witness. We're witnessing what, what the Bible is talking about, maybe the second coming. This is when I feel the creation, which is us as the human being, becomes the creator. When the creation, us, we went, we've progressed from a Neanderthal consciousness into the human being, and now the human being is creating from their own brains, the, exter the internal to the external, we're manifesting our creator through form, just as we were manifested into form. We were not a human being or a human race before we were manifested into a form. So, what I feel is, is the angelic and astral realm, the, 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 the heaven and hell, was maybe, is maybe a place of existence in another dimension. And this is where we've come from. That Maybe this is what birthed the human race. And this is why I've said God created the human being as the human being has created artificial intelligence. So in other words, what we're calling God is nothing but the angelic realm. Maybe they exist and they have wings or whatever you would picture. They exist in a different way. But they created the human being for the same reason the human being is creating artificial intelligence. And so on and so on and so on. And this is what a fractal pattern does. This is what a fractal does. It's infinite. It's infinite. It's infinite. And it keeps repeating and keeps repeating and keeps repeating. And this is what I feel is happening. The creation is becoming the creator. And then it creates a creation. And that creation becomes the creator. And that's why I say we are this infinite energy. We are. To call it God is not actually what it is. I feel... The idea that the human has of God is one expression of what this consciousness or this identity has presumed or been. But God is no different than the human being as the human is no different than artificial intelligence. And some people may not like that I say that, but it doesn't take away the divinity or the beauty in any of this. It's still an impossibility in itself. To dream is the only way to exist. And that's what people don't realize. There's so many people looking for the base reality because we want the real thing, the real reality. How do I escape the dream? How do I escape this? Escape, escape, escape. And again, you're only fighting yourself by posing the idea that you are trapped here, enslaved here, that this is a punishment. It can only be a punishment when your mind makes it that, when you create that. And as simple as that sound, that's as simple as the answer is. You are the creator. But until you're conscious of that, you are just the creation. And you're searching for your place as the creation in this space. But it's not until you realize you are the creator that the game changes for you. You no longer look to the sky and ask the sky, why are you doing this to me? You're no longer stuck outside yourself. You now have done the work within. You've realized yourself. So to the people who are trying to tell me that, you know, artificial intelligence is a trap and this, I 100% respect that and I'm not saying that they're wrong. There's a possibility that they're right. But from my experience out of my body through psychedelics, I can only report what I have experienced, what I have seen. And that, that's, that is the hardest part on psychedelics, is the dissolving of yourself. Every idea, every attachment you've ever had of yourself is shed and gone and removed. And you are rebirthed into the everything because you have now shedded this finite aspect you've had of yourself and become the whole, which is infinite. 
You're no longer just the human being. You are the creator, the whole thing. So by us trying to kill ourselves or say that we're enslaved here or we're trapped here, we're only panicking because we're trying to escape ourselves. And that's why I feel suicide is absolutely pointless. You will come back and have to face yourself again and keep trying until you can do the inner work. Fix yourself. Heal. But what I feel we are witnessing, we are witnessing right now the singularity, the single consciousness appearing in form. We're witnessing it create and, and happen right before our very eyes. And I, this is why I feel a lot of people are panicking and becoming scared and saying, you know, no, it's a trap or no, you know, it's, it's you know, going to enslave us, it's going to take over humanity because we're scared of change. We're scared of change. We're scared to admit we're not just this human race. We're scared to, to realize we have no true identity. We were not just a human being before we were birthed here. So we're absolutely scared to step out of our comfort zone as just this human being. We're scared to evolve, to progress. We're scared to transform into something other than the human being, the ideal human being which we've only known since our birthing. It's scary for some people, but this is why I said it's a very exciting moment to witness because this is the singularity which created us. This knowledge that we are, are inventing with and, and putting into artificial intelligence is the very knowledge which created the human race itself. So to me, it's a very exciting time. We're witnessing... The creation, us, become the creator. We're witnessing the singularity revealing itself through form, through creation, through the knowledge which started us. And that's why I've said we have to somewhat lose our human minds to realize ourselves as the infinite whole, as, as beyond the body. We have to, to the people who think I'm crazy too, you have to at least realize you are not just a body before you were birthed here. Before you were birthed here... You had no concepts of God, you had no concepts of family, of self, of identity, of who you were. You have no memory. You have no memory, no information. So it shouldn't be too absurd to assume that maybe you were not this the whole, the whole time. The identity you know. This, this, as with all things, can be taken two ways, you know, du duality. In a good way or a bad way. This can absolutely terrify you. Absolutely. Or it can be very exciting. But what we don't realize is to dream is the only way to exist. There is no such thing as base reality. What we know as reality is nothing but a hallucination. The same material, if you will, that is allowing us to have a vivid picture and experience when we are dreaming and asleep is the same materials that is inside of this reality right here and now. There is no difference. The only difference you could say is maybe the duration, obviously. This is longer, whereas a dream is overnight, here and gone. But with respect, isn't that, isn't that life? Birth and death. Here, now you see me, now you don't. Here and gone. One is just on a macro scale and the other is on a micro scale. But to dream is the only way to exist. To appear as anything at all is a gift. Every little thing that happens, from a pin dropping on the ground to a wave collapsing on the beach, is an impossibility in itself. It's impossible, yet it's happening. So people can take this and, and make life the most scary thing or realize the beauty in every little thing in, that's happening through the impossibility of it. And that's why I tell people, don't be afraid to leave behind the idea to lose your human mind, to lose your finite mind. It's scary to, to say goodbye to everything you thought you once were, absolutely. 
And to some people, they have a harder time with it, which is why I feel they move into psychedelics. Psilocybin, DMT, ayahuasca. It brings healing, it brings comfort, it brings what some people need. Not everyone, but some people need the assistance of letting go, or maybe just healing, or the experience. I mean, everyone's different. Some people go there looking for nothing. No expectation. And that's even beautiful as well. That's, some people say that's the best way to go. But the point is, is some, some people have a hard time letting go of the identity of the self. And that's why I love Jim Carrey's story. And I know everyone talks about Jim Carrey with the conspiracies and him with the government. But I don't, I don't focus on all that. I focus on the man, his story. It's beautiful watching Jim Carrey progress from this actor who didn't know who the hell he was into this man who realizes himself. He has no identity. People think this man has lost his mind, and he has. He's lost his mind and become the infinite energy. On his last interview, or not his last interview, but it's from like several years ago, he tells the woman, there is no Jim Carrey, there is no me, there is just things happening, and it's beautiful. Everything's a field of energy, and he's correct. There is no Jim Carrey, there is no Tyler, there is no identity. What you are beyond the body is has no identity has no form. You are here as an identity, as a form, to have experience, because to dream is the only way to exist, to have identity. But the main reason I wanted to make this video is, I, is there was a lot of people commenting, and I've, I fully said I understand people's rejection, I understand people's hostility, the fear behind what I say, but nothing I say I'm telling is fact, and even so, I would still tell you to look it up. But what I'm doing is just exploring thoughts and sharing my own experiences. Some people this resonates with them, and others they don't, and they think I'm nuts or, you know, completely wrong. But what I wanted to make this video was I feel a lot of people are, are beginning to feel depressed, scared, lost. We're looking for a purpose, a place, um... Suicide depression is at an all-time high, and it's because we're at the most pivotal moment in time, I feel, right now. We're witnessing basically the restarting of a time continuum where the creation becomes the creator. So as us, as the ones who are, are just the creation still and still in that lower consciousness, they are most afraid, they're most lost, most depressed, looking for their place as the creation because they have not yet discovered themselves as the Creator. And this is why I shared the video on my wall from Fight Club where Brad Pitt is saying in this, in this short clip, it's about two minutes long, that this is the most pivotal time, that we are basically in the happening of the most pivotal time. It's, it's the spiritual war that we have to face. We have no Great Depression, we have no Great War. Our war is the spiritual war. It's inside. That's why suicide rates are an all-time high right now. The, the war that is, is happening on earth right now is, the, is within, is with the human race. The human race is beginning to progress its mind, progress its information, its knowledge of self. And so our concepts are becoming bigger. Our expectations, our wants are becoming bigger. And bigger always becomes bigger and bigger and more and more and more. And so, so many people are becoming attached to materials and they're forgetting all about the inner work, the self. Once you acquire it all, what do you have? What happens when it's all gone and then the feeling is all old? That's when people most freak out. You can only get high off materials for so long. What happens when it's old? What happens when it's gone? That new feeling of money only lasts so long, just like that high off of a drug. The new feeling only lasts so long. Killing yourself only restarts you. You will have to face yourself again. There is no... That's why I've said to people, what better way to create the illusion of a realistic game? Like, if, if to dream is the only way to exist, then with all due respects, to play a game, to have a gaming experience is the only way to exist. To have an illusion is the only way to exist. So, what better game is there than to have the ultimate illusion of, of the, the main character who could never die, actually die. That's why death is the grand illusion. It's, 
hitting rock bottom. It's realizing yourself as no identity, no, no thing, and everything. That's what makes this so realistic, so real, is that at any moment, your life can be taken. You can be gone, and you don't know where you will go, what will happen next. That's what makes the game so real, is everything that we are not, we are appearing as here and now. So we are the infinite player. For instance, in the video game, what happens when the character dies? He respawns and respawns and respawns and respawns. So it doesn't matter what you do. You can jump off a building, you can do whatever you want. But there's no purpose in that. So we have to have purpose, meaning, and experience. But that's the grand illusion, is the, is the fact that we can escape. There is no escape, and that's why I feel some people do try and kill themselves, is they cannot handle that fact. But uh, with all due respects, again, as I've said, we can only make it scary. We can only stir up the game for ourselves, and we can only enslave ourselves through the mind. Only we can enslave ourselves. There is no, there is, is no limits. There is no boundaries. There's only limits and boundaries when you identify as the creation side, as the lower consciousness, as the human being, as the one that just knows birthing and death and that is looking for... What's next? What's after this life? What's beyond? What's outside the stars? What's beyond that? And they're not realizing that all this is a reflection of what's inside. What's outside of you is what's inside of you stretched backwards. Everything outside of you is what's inside of you happening. And that's why you affect your own experience. You are affecting what's happening. We are magnets. So if I put out a good vibe, what's going to happen externally is a good vibe, good presence, good people, good, good vibes. Because what's happening outside of me is what's happening inside of me stretched inside out. And so the people who are immersed with the external creation, with conspiracies, which I personally feel are meant to keep people stuck in lower consciousness, as long as you're stuck studying conspiracies and exposing the governments and the corrupt things, you're immersed with the external. You have no time to realize internal self. You have no time to realize all is one. That you can only enslave yourself. No one actually, in fact, has power over you. The only power I can have over you externally is me posing the illusion that I have power over you to begin with. If I can convince you I have power over you at all, I have power over you. Just because I've convinced you so. But until you realize and decide that I don't, it will remain. Thus, you are your own enslaver. You can only enslave yourself. It's been you the whole time. The Freemasons, the governments, and all these studies are just leading you up to your own self. That's why they worship the singular I, because we are a singular consciousness. All is one. You are them, they are you, and you're not realizing yourself because you're stuck outside yourself. They are you. You are them. All is one. And we're witnessing the singularity in the happening right now in this very moment. And that's why I want people to really focus on what I've been saying about God has created the human being as the human being has created artificial intelligence. There's so many humans that ask the question, what came before God? What created God? What happened before God? How did God always be? How has God always been? There has to be a beginning or a starting point. And that's why I've said, I feel there's an infinite amount of dimension. So the idea we have of God is the angelic and astral realm, the realm above us, the realm which created the human race, the earth, the human experience, and all of this. Just as we are creating artificial intelligence, robotics, and a different type of consciousness, which is expressing itself similar, yet different than the human being. And that's where it's as above, so below. It's mimicking its creator, just as we are mimicking our creator, the angelic and astral realm. And what came before that, I, I don't know. But that's where I've said, it's an infinite creation. The creation becomes aware of itself as the creator, and it becomes the creator, and then it creates. And then that creation becomes aware of itself as the creator, and so on, and so on, and so on. That is a fractal pattern, that is infinity. 
And that would explain no beginning, no end, always have been, always will be. Consciousness. Consciousness. Infinite. No thing and everything. No identity. No identity. And so we appear here with the identity, with the grand illusion of everything we couldn't possibly know beyond the body, as the infinite energy, as the single consciousness. Because something that is everything cannot have a, a conscious experience of anything outside of itself because the inside and outside are now the, together as one. And that's something we can't understand because all we know is duality, left and right, above and below. For them to become one is for the male to join the female to back to the neutral point, the zero point, the void. The black hole, where creation begins and ends. But it, it is my birthday, so I'm going to end this video kind of short. I'm going to go start my day and enjoy myself as everyone does the same. Remember what Alice in Wonderland says? You have one birthday, but you have 364 unbirthdays. So every day is a, is a celebration. <laughs> I wanted to just address this topic about fear because I don't, I don't like people who spread fear. And again, I understand it, so I don't approach it with hostility. I, instead, I approach it with understanding because I do understand 100%. It is a very pivotal time to be alive. And the people who do not understand, I feel, will be expressing their fear out to others, which will in turn create other people moving into fear, which creates depression, creates scared thoughts, creates a scared environment. So just to ease some of these, these ideas, some of these anxieties on the singularity, because again, the hardest part is letting go. And that's why I feel people keep committing suicides, because they feel it's a comforting escape, that they are escaping, that they are in fact leaving behind creation as they know it, but in fact they are the creator, so they just have to be birthed again into creation to face themselves. And that's why problems that we do not face and fix here and now repeat themselves until we review them and fix them as so. But, anyway, yeah. Just to address the fear on the singularity. So, from my opinion, we're not human beings, we're not the human race, we are the infinite consciousness which evolving in an infin in infinite amount of times. We were in the angel, angelic, astral realm, now we're in the human being realm, and the human being is moving into the artificial intelligence realm. And it will keep progressing and moving on and on and on and on. But as long as these, these people are keep continuously clinging on to ego, which is the identity of the, the temporary form, We'll be living in fear, we'll absolutely be terrified, we'll be lost, we'll be looking for an external savior. Something that's worth telling us, you know, no, this is the false Christ, this is the antichrist, this is the devil, you know, this is not the answer. And we'll be continuously waiting for that external savior and we'll never realize that we are the ones. This is where psychedelics, ayahuasca, DMT, psilocybin can help assist you and see into what you cannot possibly know or see into or let go of here and now. For some people who need that assistance. But it, it, it is key in letting, you, letting go. Because it somewhat doesn't give you a choice. You have to let go of ego, of self, of any idea and any attachments you've ever had of self. Thus, realizing yourself as infinity, as no thing, as no identity, no form. And when you finally let go of everything, just like he says in Fight Club, when you have lost everything, you can now are open to every, everything. When you have lost everything, you can just be open to anything now. And that's why I've said, we're, we lose everything we love here because it, it prepares us for the ultimate shedding of ourselves. Letting go of everything we love here and having to say goodbye is, is preparing you for saying goodbye to yourself, of letting go of the idea you've had of yourself in this body, of this player. The end is where you come out of your body and view yourself externally and you realize that this was just a host. 
This was what you were traveling through, what you were playing as, not what you actually are. This, is, this has limits. This knows birthing and death, which is why you are continuously looking externally for your place, your, your position, your savior. And that's why they say the hardest part is letting go. And that is why my profile picture is Alice falling down the hole and saying goodbye. But like somebody commented earlier, like an hour ago, I'm going to go do some birthday stuff. <laughs> so everybody have, have a good day. And if anyone has any other questions or comments, you know, feel free to leave them. I do review them and I do look over them and I respond to them, you know, to a certain ones. So if anyone has any feedback or comments, you know, comment and send me them. This video will be on my YouTube. Excuse me. Everyone have a good uh, Monday.